When mm. I first started therapy, when I said I, I thought I was being selfish. Yeah. I'm um, probably still in that headspace. You know what I mean? Honest. I used to think, God, who do you think you are? Just talking about me, me, me the whole time. Mm. Um, and I was doing cabaret, uh, the musical, and people would talk at the beginning. And it was and it was very difficult for me to hear the music. So I was like, I'm learning boundaries. I'm going to practice this. Maybe it wasn't the best thing. But anyway, the lesson was great. So I stood up in front of the company and thought, listen, I've said this about five times to the company manager. And no one's listening. So I was like, I'm going to do it. And I said, this is what happens. This is how I feel about it. This is what I would prefer. Someone came. She's a friend of mine. It triggered her. She came into my dressing room and she was like, I can't believe it wasn't shaming me, but she was like, you know, I just feel like, you know, I've done everything wrong. And, and she kept on saying we. And, you know, we. And I was like, I've got to stop you there because if it's a we situation, we're going to have a, have a I'm going to have to have, we're going to have a conversation with the whole company. But the whole company aren't in my dressing room. It's just you. And she did it a couple of times. She was like, yeah, but the thing is, you know, we were, we were talking and I said, I'm going to have to bring you back again to the I position because these people aren't here. Because suddenly I then feel ganged up on. Of course. But they're not in the room. <clears throat> and and then it it came out. And she was like, I used to get scolded and feel very ashamed as a child. And I was like, totally get it. Yeah. Totally get it. We're great friends. But you've got to be courageous to do that. You've got I, to I'm be. a wimp sometimes. And yeah, I go, but I oh, I'm just going to be yeah, passive aggressive yeah, instead. I bet you're not with your kids, though. No, I'm not. I'm not with you've the kids. You've got to treat people gotta, like yeah, kids. Yeah, I guess so. Literally, like, my neighbour was like, what? <laughs> yeah, you got to treat people. Yeah, I get it. Like mm. like kids. I get it. Look, I also really desperately on a, on a personal level want to talk to you about your nervous system because I feel yeah. like I still am not in a great place. Like this week, on my anxiety has been quite bad for my, a myriad reasons. I don't need to bore anyone with, but lots of physically stored anxiety. Oh, yeah. And I tested myself yesterday, and I don't like driving on the motorway. I get. Oh, no. A huge panic attack things going on. I left it five years at one point, which was not a great idea. But recently I've been chipping away at it. But so. you used to you used to unicycle on the motorways instead, didn't I you? I used to do all yeah. sorts on yeah. the motorway. I could do it all, handstands, whatever. Uh -huh. So again, you know, I wish I was like my old normal yeah, self. Yeah. You could drive on the motorway. Yeah, 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 I get that. Uh, but anyway, I went yesterday and I drove to Henley, which is an hour away, and back. And I did it. And it was tough at times, but I did it. And it was great. But I can... Mine is all in my chest. Yeah. I can feel it yeah. here. It's like it's alive. It's electric. Me it's too. Oh. Worms moving. It's just, I can feel it all here. And I'm constantly looking for new things to do. I'll do cold water therapy, yoga, running, walking barefoot. I'll do bloody anything yeah. to help. And you say in the book that most days your main goal is to feel balanced yeah. physically. Like that's your goal is to wake up and go, how today will I feel physically okay and not in panic so, so tell me I mean, a bit about yeah. this I mean I really really relate to what you're saying so first of all thank you because I don't meet many people that are so aware of their body in that way and I ha have that I feel it mostly in my chest yeah it's absolutely exhausting yeah it's horrible it, and 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 if the body isn't settled you know to be honest if the body's calm everything else is kind of a breeze yeah it just doesn't stay with me you know I might go and have acupuncture and then I'm, I'm walking around I literally feel like I'm in the sound of music I'm like <laughs> hello children hello traffic warden I don't give a shit you know I got fired from another job and um, it's really weird times at the moment it must be the moon <laughs> the moon and, bloody um, moon bloody moon and I just had acupuncture so I was like it doesn't matter mm -hmm. you know but it doesn't stay so yeah. so yeah okay so I used to be love being in the car I find it really difficult. Um, when I got ill, for some reason, it, it, I then really noticed it in my body. So what I noticed was that when my body is feeling agitated and anxious, you know, life is a lot harder. So I try and have a toolkit that I use to sort it out. I love lying on the floor on my back. It really helps. My body reacts so well. Um, you know, I stop drinking. So that really helps. So I, you're completely sober now. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And it's just like, I just feel better. Yeah. And I've lost weight and it's nice. Um, you know what I mean? And I'm not eating crap food. I go and have acupuncture. I have massages. I've got like foam rollers. Yeah. I mean, literally. Have you got the spiky mat that you lie yes, on? Yes, yeah. I've got them all. I haven't I've used it yet, but I've got one. machine. That doesn't work, but it worked for a bit. <laughs> a chi that, machine. That was 400 quid. But, you know, I've got infrared. But, you know, 
my thing is like <laughs> they all work to a degree so we just need different toolboxes mm. quite often my body will settle if i had the most consistent thing it would be doing this connecting chatting mm. actually i think it's probably the same for me yeah connecting with someone who i feel safe with mm. um and really taking inventory of people i don't feel safe around yeah because actually i've got people that make me feel um on such high alert, I can feel the cortisol going up my yeah. neck. Oh, God, yeah. And I think, why is it? Because they're not saying anything no. mean or there's not even a power play. I just feel like I don't know how to be around you. I don't know how to be me and feel OK. I can't even describe it. It's very strange. You might be. I mean, one, you might be picking up. Their on shit. On their shit. Yeah. Because if you, you're sensitive. Very. And people talk about empaths and things like yeah. that. But I can find myself in someone's place within a second I'm like hang on why am I I was suddenly like what are they going to do I'm like well I'm not in that position yeah. you know um, but also what's amazing about our bodies but what we don't realise is you know we're fight and flight animals so we will pick up on other people's energies one of the amazing things that I learned is if someone's presenting something to me but my body's getting something else it fries my system mm. so if I'm seeing someone and they're, if they're smiling at me and going but my but my body's like get the fuck out of oh, here. Oh, I know. I'm like I can think of the people. Yeah, I yeah. know this. But I listen to that now. Oh god, I need I to listen, listen to it. To I that met now. someone two days ago. He was deadly handsome, so he, oh, so I gave him five seconds. Of course. <laughs> but you know, he walked out of his door, and um, and I was thinking about it yesterday, and I was like, couldn't cope with the energy. Yes. Wasn't judging him. But I was like, I can't cope with this fucking. I don't know what's going on. 